everybody. Welcome to Soapbox. My name is Mauro Di Pasquale. I'm the executive director here at WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel, nonprofit, charitable, public access, community media right here for you. And our mission is you. Our mission is your vision. So this is your vision television. We exist so that you can find a place in this electronic forum uh, where you can share your uh, views and opinions, your culture, your the organizations you work for, anything at all. We're here to give you this, this service for whatever you need it to be. And we exist only because you need it. So if you don't need it anymore, we're gone, we're done. So keep that in mind. If you think that there's still room for free speech, if you think there's still room for television in your life and, and media content that you can place anywhere on the internet or whatever, we can help you with that. We provide the studio tools, the studio setting, uh, the remote tools if you need it, uh, the training, the classes, the workshops, year-round after-school programs for kids, uh, citizen journalism, uh, community news uh, departments here. Uh, people pr produce their own news program. You make the news. Why wait for someone else to tell you what's news? So that's what we're here for, WCCA TV. To learn more, give us a call, 508-755-1880, or look us up online at WCCATV.com. If you want to be a guest on this show or any show, really, you just call the same numbers. But if you want to be on Soapbox specifically, 755-1880, extension 10, or T-R-A-C-Y at WCCATV.com. Tracy. T-R-A-C-Y at WCCATV.com and asked to be on Soapbox. We have dozens of shows that are just like that. As a matter of fact, one of our guests produces his own show here as well, 508. Uh, if you give Mike a call, he'll, he'll get the camera on you as well. So uh, we're here. We're here to help you uh, get, get out there and uh, be, become empowered. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest. I'm really excited because these are people that know more than I do about what's going on in the city. Uh, they're, they're the front line of the city, the way I think of it. And more importantly, they're a lot younger than this old guy. So, man, I'm sick of hearing from old people. <laughs> so I'm glad you're here. Um, but they're the, the editors of a, of a document called The Happiness Pony, a publication, Happiness Pony. And you can see it right there. Looks pretty cool. There's some interesting artwork. And I'm not even sure what this is. It looks like a puzzle <laughs> or a game or something. Uh, so, yeah, and there's, there's another edition. And, and Mike, what were you saying? This is, this is a sort of a, a tribute to... This is a tribute to the Worcester Spy. The Worcester Spy was a, an old newspaper out of Worcester. It was uh, run by Isaiah Thomas, whose, I think, greatest legacy is the American Antiquarian Society over yeah, on Park right. Avenue. Right. And uh, in some aspect, actually, the Worcester Spy, down through the years, sort of mutated into what's now the Telegram and Gazette. So by some, by some measures, the TNG is the oldest newspaper in the United States. Yeah. I never understood the history of that very well. But anyway, this is, this is uh, done in the style of the uh, Worcester Spy, this new happiness pony masthead yeah. that we have. Aiden Duffy drew that. He did a very great job. Very nice. And when did that come into, into being, the new, the new masthead? Just a couple, a couple months ago. We, we, yeah. we used to just have a very plain masthead to contrast with the sort of crazy content. And yeah. then uh, we finally got Aiden to do that just sort of as like a, well, this would be a fun novelty for one month. Yeah. But it was so great and people loved it so much. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. And, and now I, I, wanna, I don't want to be remiss and, and introduce who else is here with Mike. We have Mike Benedetti, who you just heard from. Uh, we also have Shane Capra, who's here, and, and Jen Burt, who's here as well. And uh, they're at, all of them edit and contribute to Happiness Pony. So we're going to talk a little bit about Pony, some of the uh, articles that come in. First of all, where does the name come from? Uh, the name of Happiness Pony is just a name that was sort of kicking around for a really long time. Um, years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine down in Philadelphia. Uh, he used to read Adbusters. I don't know if people ever saw this. It used to be sort of a fairly popular sort of countercultural magazine. The last couple of years sort of got famous again because they sort of helped inspire uh, Occupy Wall Street, strangely mm -hmm. enough. Um, and he was just tired of reading Adbusters. He, I think he appreciated the politics, but he felt it was super negative and super predictable. And we were just talking about what would be the anti-Adbusters. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, it would be something called like Happiness Pony. Like we'd have this completely hilarious, frivolous, you know, <laughs> non-aggressive name. And uh, so I think so when it time, came time to do a, a free monthly newspaper in Worcester, the name Happiness Pony seemed as good as any other title we had. Yeah, it, it certainly, you know, it, it sparks some interest, too, because mm -hmm. you're like, okay, well, it's happy. Well, the great, a pony. Who doesn't the, like that? The great thing is, too, we've, oh, we've, yeah. we've been able to, you know, hand it out at street festivals um, and, you know, just to stand there and say, like, thousands of times, Happiness Pony, 
happiness pony, there's definitely a certain percentage of people who are like, okay. And a couple of times, uh, one time we were down in Providence a few months ago doing this, and uh, there's this little girl walking down the street. She seemed so tired and so, like, just whatever, exhausted with the street festival and the weather and everything. And when we said, happiness pony, she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also that sliver of a sliver of people who, when they hear that title, they're like, okay. Yeah. These are my people. There you go. Uh, it, it does have a, a real, it also has a real sort of organic feel to it. Mm -hmm. I can't explain that. Many better than that, but it, it, re it really does. It just, and, and it seems to be now. Who can who contributes to this? Can anyone tr contribute to Any, this? Anyone, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is forcing kind of our friends and acquaintances to write for it. But sometimes we get really random people that yeah. we know uh, just have something interesting that they could write about. And because yeah. I mean, everything like this issue, you have Aiden Duffy that did the masthead. But then, like his dad wrote "Faster Cake for a Stronger." Um, no, no wait, his dad Myth wrote of "Myth of the Runner's High." Yeah. So yeah. like, that's great because you have like this intergenerational like. It, yeah. I really think it really captures like the weird Worcester. Yeah. Like yeah. that's out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, the interesting and diverse trains of thought, I think, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and expression. I think that's really important because people tend to think everything is just one way, and mm -hmm. it's not. It's just. The ones that control the, the mainstream media make it look like it's just this way, and you know everyone else is like on the fringe. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they, it's easy to marginalize you that way. But here, you know, you're up front. Everyone's mixed in. Now, now, Shane, what brings you here? Uh, I was just kind of roped in, eventually, <laughs> like by sheer. Like I started like submitting, um, I guess, articles to Happiness Pony, and then eventually Mike just tricked me into editing them, <laughs> and things like that. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was just a contributor who eventually became an editor. Yeah. yeah. So, do you have an? In you obviously must have an interest in writing and and feel like you need to contribute to something somewhere. Yeah, I mean, like the way it works at Happiness Pony is that we're actually mostly forcing each other to write. So, we're, I think yeah. it's safe to say that the three of us enjoy writing. Yeah. And we would love to do more of it, but we just don't. Yeah. So the the process is really like sitting down and like being like, Jen, you have to do this. Mm. You have to write this now. Yeah. Now, Jen, how about you? What, what brings you to the table? <laughs> yeah, I think I got really early on in having this pony. I wrote some like article about ponies, literally, and then I just yeah, I I really appreciate like someone actually said to me recently, "Oh, you're a writer," and I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, I'm not a writer. <laughs> I like, I you know I." I'm a farmer, if anything, and like there's probably other things below that that I would list way higher than writer. I enjoy writing, but they were like, no, no, happiness pony. And I was like, I, yeah, I guess. I guess yeah. <laughs> because it is there's some this bizarre thing that happens where we, so, we yeah. sit down once a month, uh, usually near the end of the month, mm. and like in this fr frenetic kind of pace, we're like, you said you were going to write about cake. You said you were going <laughs> to write about yeah, Fruitlands, and like we just sit there and write it, and then we kind of tear apart a little bit our, yeah. our own writing, or each other's writing. And mm -hmm. well, I think that's what's, yeah. that's that's really interesting because, you know, it's to be a journalist, it, it really doesn't take anything special other than not to, not I'm not don't mean it in a way to downplay anybody, <laughs> but you know, I, I think there's this you know perception out there that you know. To be a journalist, I must go to Harvard and Yale, and I must know that what I should do and the protocol. But it really is. It's just like I see something, I write it down. It's my experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. You know, and I think that's really cool. That's, that's interesting. Uh, when you say you, know, you have to, you know, someone's roped you in and they forced you to write, and I've got to write this and that, are you thinking, I know you probably really kind of want to, so it's not so much forced, right? Yeah. All right, there's so there's it, no whips. It's yeah. just kind of like I think it would encouraging. Well, I think it's <laughs> a lot of. about like for there's, like partly have, your own like ed, like your own internal editor. Like if there's other yeah. people that are like, no, you're just gonna write this. Yeah. Versus like, oh, I can't do this. I think yeah. we should just talk about the process of yeah. how this goes. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. So because because these guys these guys at one point started uh, a writing group, and they had had a meeting. Um, and they had written up on a whiteboard like the rules of this writing group and one of the rules of this writing group was no forced writing which I guess just means like you know you don't have to write about this or that or the other thing this is we're all gonna be you know it's gonna be cool we're not gonna like push people emotionally like that 
And as soon as I saw that, I said, well, we're going to have forced writing. <laughs> and this has been our process where we just, where like sometimes we sit down and we sit down as a group, we sit down with other people. I, a couple months ago, Jen did this with somebody at a bar that I saw, <laughs> a table at a bar, where you sit down and you say, here's a, here's a stopwatch, we're going to brainstorm for five minutes. Everybody's going to write down as many ideas as they can on a piece of paper for five minutes. After five minutes, somebody's going to collect them, read all the ideas, we're going to rate the ideas, then we're going to sit down and for 10 minutes, we're going to assign people the best ideas. And for 10 minutes, everybody's going to sit down and write a first draft of it. There's no Googling. There's no, there's no saying, I'm not going to. You know, like, it, I mean, so there's an understanding that like, you've been assigned to write something about Schopenhauer. You don't really know who Schopenhauer is. You know that if you read the Wikipedia page, you could write a great article about Schopenhauer, yeah. but too bad. <laughs> and then you sort of take, after 10 minutes, you read those drafts aloud. And then you have some idea of what this article could look like. Mm -hmm. And then you can take that you can take that and like give that to somebody, maybe even somebody else and say mm -hmm. here's the, here's the beginning of a thing or so this way there's no there's no blank page really. Mm -hmm. Um and so I think it can be very traumatic. I mean, for people who don't like to write or people who feel like very attached to like getting positive feedback about this, it can be really traumatic. I think, luckily, I think with, with, the, with some of the people we've written with, we were able to build up a sense of trust and mutual understanding of like, anything that comes out of this 20 minute process is going to be terrible and unusable. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. The greatest journalist in the world could be doing this process and it's probably gonna come up with something terrible and unusable. That's okay, this isn't about that. This is about kickstarting the process, getting beyond the blank page, figuring mm -hmm. out what this article could even look like, getting a perspective, getting a, an angle. Mm -hmm. you know, we're just generating some ideas and seeing where that could go. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah, and and by doing it and by doing it in this format with each other, I think overcoming the fear that any individual has that sort of gut fear of like I'm not good enough or I have to do something really beautiful or something really profound, and just saying like just fill fill the page and then we'll we'll talk about it from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But there's a dignity with everybody that's contributing, whether or not yes. they know mm -hmm. the subject or not. Yes, I mean, and, and that's the thing is that I think it's like um, I, I just remember when I was in college, you know, and people would play hacky sack, and because uh, it was in California, and so I just remember the first time I went out there to play hacky sack with these guys, and I had played a little bit in high school, but within you know a couple of kicks, I had like dropped a little ball. This is a, you know a game where you're sort of juggling a, a little tiny ball between each other with your feet, and I had dropped the ball, and I immediately said, "Oh, I'm sorry," and this one older guy. This Indian guy, Manish Sahani, said, there's only one rule in this game. Don't apologize. Everyone <laughs> drops the ball all the time. If you keep saying you're sorry, we'll spend most of the time saying you're sorry and not playing. <laughs> so don't <laughs> apologize. Profound. And I think, I think it is profound. And I feel like the yeah. forced writing is the similar thing, where it's like most of these drafts, most of these ideas and most of these drafts are going to be terrible. Don't apologize. Otherwise, we're going to spend the whole time apologizing mm -hmm. and not generating ideas. Fail with hubris. There you go. Right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Fail with hubris. I like that. You can anyway. use that. Anyway. You can use that quote next time. <laughs> now, so, so is, is there is there any is there any real is there so how is this organized? You you know you say you all me is it just is it, is it a collectively organized somehow? Or, you know is this because there's no there's no like publisher so to speak or is there? There's um, just us at the bottom. Okay. We, we run an income statement every month saying how much money we lost the last month. We run ads, but we don't charge anything for the ads, so we lose money every month. And so we just want to let people know what that figure looks like. Occasionally we yeah. get a donation, somebody mm -hmm. gives us a couple bucks, but yeah. by and large it's, it's just a fun project. But I, you know, I, I think for a lot of publications, people sometimes wonder like, what is going on with the Telegram Gazette or the New York Times or whatever? Yeah. How many yeah. people are reading this? What kind of what's the finances look like for this thing? So we're just up front and let people know. Yeah, yeah, and and, now, and you mentioned the, the writing process. How is this actually put together? Is it is it done? You know, <sighs> somebody take it and is there a template you guys are following or just organizing it a certain way? And I think we're always looking for some sort of like balance in like the types of articles we're running. Like sometimes we have a lot of good articles, but they're all like biographies of like mm -hmm. old men from like <laughs> yeah. you know like, and then we're like, oh no, we need a nature article or we need like a cooking article, you know, just things that are they're like a certain balance. Um, I think all of us are more like uh, writers, and mm -hmm. so that like figuring out the visual stuff or like making sure we remember to like ask someone to draw something for us. Mm. Uh, with yeah, now, advance a, notice. This is a centipede, I imagine. Right? A helgramite. Hel what is it? A helgramite. Helgramite. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not sure what kind of bug. Uh, well, you should read that. You should read that I'll order. have to read this article. <laughs> so, so okay. So that you, you decide. Okay, yeah. I wrote this. This will be a cool, mm -hmm. cool picture to be mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Early Franciscans. Now you wrote this, Shane, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, what inspired you to write about the Franciscans? Well, this the first. I, this is actually a series that we've decided was a series. Shane Capra's um, failed utopias, mm -hmm. and so the first one I wrote was about Fruitlands, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of this huge failure of a transcendentalist utopia mm -hmm. um, where you know they like they kick people out for eating like fish and like they um, they wouldn't plant anything that grew up it had to grow down so like that was my first article about failed utopias where after seven months of utopia they failed um, so this is the the Franciscans were an example of a, uh, a successful utopia that was kind of co-opted in the end Mm -hmm. but, How was it co-opted? Um, that was it. Was mostly co-opted as St. Francis um, kind of as the organization grew too large. This is like a two thousand person organization at this point. And he was mostly good at just being a saint, being Francis or whatever. And eventually, this kind of like moved away from his control. Yeah. So it sort of went more institutionalized. So yeah. To speak, or the the main like. church kind of just yeah. moved him into the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you see most striking about St. Francis? I think it's like, when, when you're talking about St. Francis, most people are like, oh, he talked to animals or something. And you're yeah. like, well, <laughs> he didn't really. Like, yeah. come on. But um, the, I think the most striking thing is like his, um, his just like super intense like critique of money, where like he said that, you know, if you're going to follow me, the goal is that at the end of the day, we won't have anything. So you have to like, beg for everything and then give everything away or use everything. So he wouldn't even let his followers like stew vegetables overnight because it was a, seen as a means of accruing property. Which I think is just like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, that's totally against what people see in St. Francis or in the, what the church would see in Francis. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. yeah, interesting. See, folks, this is the kind of thought you're getting behind Happiness Pony, obviously. Uh, <laughs> artwork, who's, who's the artist with, with some of the, what I'm looking at here? I know you mentioned Aiden did the uh, masthead. Yeah, a, a, a lot of people do different things. Um, we run a ton of artwork also from a website called Open Clip Art, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is um, people put up clip art and then make it either the pub, in the public domain or some kind of Creative Commons thing. And oh, nice. we actually use a ton of art that was contributed by a guy uh, a few years ago who's all I, we only know him from is his name, Johnny Automatic. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Automatic was very into taking really old uh, engravings and then making really nice, clean digital versions of them and uploading them to open clip art. So a, a ton of the visual look of it, I think, is mm -hmm. uh, from just clip art that this one guy has done and then shared with the world. Mm. We should we should probably run an article about him because mm. I think mm. if there's anything that's the look and feel of Happiness Pony, it's 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 that guy's sense and clip art. Yeah, it, but it tends to have an almost uh, a certain type of feel. Mm -hmm. I want to say not uh, Victorian or something. I don't know, it has a certain feel to it. Well, one thing that's been I, so I'm not a great, I'm, I, I sort of did the original layout for this and continue to sort of do the layout for this. And I really don't have a good visual sense and I really don't have good layout skills. Um, I, I've gotten to work with a number of people who do have good layout skills and they've continued to push me to make more reasonable choices in how this is laid out. So this is like laid out very mathematically and very classically, like we're trying to follow the golden ratio and uh, just, just sort of use these very traditional like, you know, like, you know, the, the typographer's Bible says that this should be this size and this should be right, this size. Right. Like, that's how we do it. In part because the content can be so crazy, can be so diverse, can be like all over the map. And I think that just having it look calm is an interesting contrast to the fact right. that the content usually is not calm. Right. You know, right. The, the content usually, it's not, always, it's not always crazy, but the content is usually sort of eclectic and, and but weird. It's, 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 it still is at the same time attractive, too. Yeah. Americans, liberty or death, join or die, happiness pony. I mean, I, I like <laughs> well, well, that's from the Worcester theme. Spy. That's from the Worcester of, Spy. The Americans, liberty or death. It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. not us. That, that's like a yeah. revolutionary war slogan. Well, as I Thomas used to like, though, like, whenever he talked of the king, he would draw little pictures of the devil. Oh, really? Stuff like that. Is there stuff going on here? We need 
I, don't I know. like that pony, though, the happiness pony. Yeah. I assume that's the happiness pony. Yeah, itself. sure. Well, hey, it's a, I think it's, just, it's, again, it's a Shetland pony from <laughs> openclipart.org. Yeah, yeah. Some of the t uh, talking points you guys mentioned, you know, the force writing, uh, mining the long tail, what's that? So mining the long tail is an article I wrote about, um, about this weird phenomenon in punk music called Killed by Death, where... So the majority of, um, every, day, every day there's just like countless hundreds of bands being formed and stuff, and the vast majority of them are awful and no one will ever hear them. But um, in the case of punk bands, there's so many forming each day or collapsing, but unlike other music, they'll probably have recorded at least an EP or a demo tape or something like that. Mm -hmm. And because of the nature of like, um, the way punk distribution and, you know, works is like, these records will probably be out there. So the idea is that these bands that so rapidly like form, record, and then break up um, are called killed by death. And so the idea is that like there's an infinite amount of these like weird, mysterious EPs and demos and stuff. And the idea of mining the long tail is like sifting through those, trying to find the gems. And like most of it's crap, but like there's those few that just like no one's ever heard this music except for that band that recorded it. And finding those gems is yeah. Mining the long tail. Yeah. So, is there anyone doing that? Is, is it, yeah, it's like a, it's sort a, of like uh, I want to say cataloging. Yeah, it's like a big ones. internet um, blogger thing to really go because you can go down to like whatever record store and buy like I don't know ten of these yeah. for like ten bucks and then you go listen to them and these bloggers are putting them up online and things yeah. like that. So there's a there's a big like rare record market around that where people are like at each other's throats trying to get these things and then there's people online just trying to digitize them and give them out to everybody. Yeah, so. that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of musicians probably go through this, the, the process, the exercise, mm -hmm. and no one's ever going to hear this. You know, I know yeah. a lot of musicians that feel like they wrote and spent their life writing and it's like, it's in a closet somewhere, they just mm -hmm. kind of like gave up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to know that there's some life out there, there's, you know. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that happening with other uh, music farms, mm -hmm. you think? I think like now that it's so easy to record at home and you know you're not going to get the production values or whatever but like right. I think that's probably more happening but I think there's this special place in punk where you don't have standards anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean you have standards but they're pretty low especially yeah. for like you know you just want to hear weird thrashy punk music so. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the other points that was written was uh, uh, Gamera. <laughs> That's with a G like camera, but Gamera. I just wanted to talk about Gamera mostly because I think that this is something that we need for an upcoming issue, is something about Gamera or more things involving dream logic. Like people will know Gamera is just this sort of like Godzilla knockoff. One of the other Japanese studios said, Godzilla has been really popular. We need something like that for ourselves. And they said, Here's a, we'll make it a giant turtle and we'll call it Gamera and it'll be its own thing. But Gamera went in like a weird direction where Gamera at some point was like really like a good friend to all children <laughs> and would like defend them against mean adults. <laughs> and um, there's at least, there's this, there's one Gamera, is it Destroy All Monsters? Um, there's one Gamera, maybe it's Attack of the Monsters, I don't remember the name of it. They all have bad, boring names in English. He fights this knife-headed guy at the end though. But it's very much according to like a dream logic that about every 50, you're sort of watching this movie and it's kind of okay, and then about every 15 minutes, some connection is made that doesn't quite make sense and the movie takes off in a different direction. And I really appreciate that dream logic and I would, if any people are interested in writing things that have a dream logic or about things that are interesting to them, pieces of art that are interesting to them because of dream logic, I think we need to have more dream logic-y articles, maybe a dream logic special issue. That's just an appeal so, to the viewers so of Soapbox. You, you, you mean like non sequitur? I mean like, a, yeah, like, like, like non sequitur, but just sort of like a non sequitur, but also just like going with it and sometimes especially like slipping in that non sequitur under the radar. Like yeah. not like, you know, Monty Python would say, and now for something completely different right. and just crash two things together that way. Right. I think that dream logic sometimes has non sequiturs that it doesn't make a big deal about because it's trying right. to just slide them by you. Right, right. And I think I Almost really like find that. Yeah, I find that it, either those things can be frustrating and, and irritating to watch or those things can be completely charming and repay many viewings. Yeah. Now, but you do seem to have limited space in the, in the uh, Happiness mm. Pony. Mm. Well, we come out every month, and it's always tricky to fill Happiness yeah. Pony. We're, mm. we're putting out yeah. another issue this week, and we're still not 100% done. Yes. So, again, like, people should go to happinessponycom <laughs> and they can contact us there. Mm -hmm. uh, if, people are, if people have seen this around and they want to, like, submit some stuff, our, our reject rate is uh, pretty high. 
<laughs> but again, we're not rejecting things because you're a bad person or because you're incompetent, just because it maybe doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little, I'm always, always a little queasy about re asking people to do stuff because you're doing it for free and you're spending your time and you're yeah. spending your, mm -hmm. your, you know, your passion on your energy on this, and then having somebody say, oh, and we're just probably going to reject it too, mm -hmm. seems kind of what is that? Yeah. But um, I definitely want to like just you know continue to invite people who we don't know and people who have different perspectives and ideas. Um, and what was the website again? Happinesspony.com. Happinesspony.com. And uh, bad meetings, what, what's that all about? Uh, so that, what? we all go to a lot of meetings um, for different, so like organizing, we have house meetings, we have, I don't even know, work meetings. Um, and so Shane wrote an article that was kind of about bad meetings all the way down, which you know, you go to a lot of, you should just, just explain it because it's your. Um, okay, I, this is, yeah. So <laughs> the, there's, is the phrase turtles all the way down? Yeah, turtles yeah, all the way Yeah, so it's basically just like this idea that we're going, we're in this weird world where it's just like an endless stream of meetings. Do you, do you just want to explain this? I don't even remember what I wrote. <laughs> I could explain this. I feel it's because we're living in an advanced, you know, like post-industrial information age society. <laughs> Things are, everything is very contingent, everything is very complicated, everything is very specialized. It's all created through meetings. Most of these meetings are bad. So mm -hmm. our entire lives and our entire civilization are in some ways mm -hmm. built on this stack of bad meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 But then where did you take that idea? Then I c compared it to the myth of Sisyphus rolling a rock up a map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we keep doing it. Uh, yeah. 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 In the hopes that one day the, the meetings will end and it will be all done. But yeah, I don't you would think. think so. That might change. I don't know about that. I don't know. I can't stand going <laughs> to meetings, I'll tell you. Because a lot of times it's like, okay, we're going to spin. We know it's, it's, sometimes it's important because you mm -hmm. want to hear from everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you could find another way to do it without having the, the mm. meeting, you know. That I think that was the thing about the article there was, I feel like I go to a lot of meetings and I can somehow like make them better. <laughs> like there's just, if there's better facilitation or better notes coming in or something. Yeah. Just realizing that, like, you're probably just gonna like resigning yourself yeah. to that, and that good things are gonna right. come out of it, hopefully. Right. Yeah, I'm getting the high sign here, so right. it's already time. But listen, where can people get mm. a copy of Happiness Pony? Coffee shops around the city. Coffee shops around the city. I'll hold this up again. Happiness Pony. You got to read it. Please read it. Uh, we're we're glad to be able to talk about it here at WCCA TV. Any final comments before the? Uh, Music cuts us off completely. Thanks for talking to us. All right, yeah, Mike, thanks. thank you for being here. Shane, thank you for being here. And Jen, it's good to have you here. Uh, much success with this. <laughs> Happiness Pony, <laughs> happinesspony.com. Until next time, I'm Mauro Di Pasquale. I look forward to seeing you on WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel. I didn't even get to get to serendipity or Patty Smith. Though.